In the original Predator, uh, Jean Claude Van Damme was playing as Predator. I'm sure you know oh, that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. In the background, you're going to see Jean Claude Van Damme's costume. Uh, the kid's wearing it. Ah, oh, I'll have to re. Oh, thanks, mate. He just gave me another reason to re watch the Predator now. <laughs> God's sake. Yes. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> Right, so the prey, spoiler talk, we're doing this, baby. Right, yeah, so guys, I've already been here on uh, Alice's show many times before, but now he's on mine. <laughs> so this is cool. So welcome, Alice. Yeah. I think, yeah, yeah, you're the first person I've actually had, like, do a proper collaboration like with on my channel. So that's nice. Oh, mate, I'm honored. Yeah, you saw this yesterday, didn't you? I did. I did indeed. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, you watched it after me. You were working. Um, so yeah, I've already posted my non-spoiler review on this, and um, so yeah, both you and I are massive, massive, massive uh, predator connoisseurs, obviously. Um, and this is—I can only—you're the only person I know who I can actually say this about. I haven't said this about. I can't say this about anyone else. You actually like Predator more than I do. And that's a fucking strange thing for me because I'm not used to people um, liking it more than me, but you are. Because um, obviously, like, Tim Burton's Batman is your all-time favourite film and you said that Predator is your second favourite. And, um, yeah, with yeah, with me, uh, with me, Predator is, if, if it's not in my top 10, it's definitely in my top 20. You like it more than I do. You've also read all the comic books and all that. I don't I read comic books, so you actually have more, like, more to do with this whole thing than I do. And um, the only the only thing I know more about Predator than you do is the uh, video games. That's it. That's about yeah, it. I haven't I haven't ventured into uh, the video games yet. Pretty much, like, I don't really want to go too deep for me at least for you you can but for me i don't want to go too deep with my experiences with predator because um i've already done it on my fucking last video my non-spoiler review so i'm going to summarize it in 20 seconds for me uh first predator masterpiece second predator flawed as fuck but i think there's enough brilliance in there to make it possible i don't think the alien versus predator films are canon and i don't think they were made to be canon you know all the law contradicts the previous films and stuff but I can't deny it, I, as mediocre as it is, goddamn, I have fun with the first AVP film. And the second AVP, that didn't happen, I despise it. Predator is underrated as fuck, goddamn, love it to death, love it so much. And um, The Predator, again, not canon, just mediocre trash, but I do have some fun with elements. And um, what about you? Can you, uh, by all means, you can go into a bit more... Uh, depth if you want to about your history with it but yeah please by all means say how you feel about the previous films first predator film is like an all-time absolute favorite of mine second favorite film of all time and it, it's mainly down to how much i used to watch it as a kid and now it's it's inherently re-watchable and i think it's more or less the perfect action film like hands yeah. down as well as a horror sci fi sci-fi picture mm -hmm. um Second Predator, I absolutely love. I think it does everything a sequel needs to do. I th the, the, the reason why I didn't like it as much as a younger kid is because it didn't follow, like, adventures with Dutch. So, obviously, as a younger kid, and to this day now, Arnold Schwarzenegger is one of my favourite actors of all time. And as a kid, it was all about Batman and about Arnie films. Um, so Predator 2 comes out, like, obviously, like, I, I watched that, like, on TV, like, I, I wasn't born when that come out in the cinema, but um, mm -hmm. as I've got older, I've come to appreciate it way more over time, to the point now where I think it's, like, near enough, like, not a perfect sequel, but I think it does everything it should do, um, and I love Danny Glover as the, uh, the protagonist, and he's baggy pants predators me and you were in the same boat on that one where i think it's a really underrated film it's it it like i was saying with uh, predator 2 like obviously it's not the perfect sequel it has like concrete jungle elements to it which is which is new and inventive for the the franchise but in predators they take it back to the jungle 
it's not necessarily the jungle on Earth because it's on a different planet where the predators are dropping people off to hunt, basically. But um, I think it expands the law, the predator law, really well in that one. Um, oh, God, predator, yeah, it's so well. The predators themselves as well look amazing, I think, um, like their size. Uh, the AVP films, I, I have fun with both of them. I'm similar to you where I don't feel like they're quote-unquote canon. Like, I'll just put them on on a Saturday night when I've had, like, five beers, do you know what I mean, and have fun with both of them. Um, I've actually, I, I used to hate the uh, Alien versus Predator Requiem um, the second one, but even that one I've grown to grown to enjoy. It's just like B movie schlock with aliens and predators. It's just turn your brain off and have a good time with that one. Fair the enough. Predator, such a weird one. Um, hated it for the majority of it, of it being out. Uh, watched it multiple times though, trying to to find something to latch onto within the film, but. The whole premise with the, the kid and stuff and the Predator Iron Man at the end, fucking hate it. Hate it with what, a passion. Dude, what were they thinking when they did that yeah, suit at, at the end, man? That is horrific. You know what, right? With that suit at the end, the Iron Man suit at the end, right? That is something I could have seen happening now with the franchise because it's been owned by Disney now. It's been obviously bought by Disney. That's yeah, the sort yeah. of shit I could see Disney pulling with the franchise, but it didn't. <laughs> that happened with Fox. So, like, that to me is just like, what the fuck? And it was, like, directed by Shane Black. Like, I thought, oh, this is, like, this is a slam dunk. Like, this is going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. To have the guy who was involved with the original, who was, he didn't write the whole thing. He was just, like, doctoring the script pretty much. Um and was like asked to go and, and, and like act on the film as well. He's not like a, a main player actor. I think it was more just like a, a favor sort of situation. But Shane Black, he like he's a solid director in his own right. He's directed some beauty films. The nice guy is Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. So for him to go over at this franchise, it was like this'll be this'll be amazing. What a load of shit that film is. I think it was the studio. The studio just fucked them up. <laughs> That was it. I think it was a studio botch job. I don't think it was his fault. Can you remember before that film came out, there were some um, images released beforehand of like the production and stuff. And can you remember there was like a picture of a tank and it had like three predators on the tank? Yep, what I do. What the fuck was going on with that film? What was going on? <laughs> So yeah, we get prey, and I'm so shocked we've got this. Like it only took four years for them to, for them to do this. I thought we'd be waiting a lot longer to Me get both, another. Man. Yeah, I thought we'd be waiting a lot longer because it's not often that we get a. We don't even have that many predator films for fuck's sake. Um, let alone um one coming out this early. I think the last time they did this was with either AVP two or Predator two. It's been a long time since they've done that. And um, yeah, so I was nervous going in. I thought it looked like woke trash with the female protagonist and all that. And um, wow, that shut me up. It's what I get. For, that shut me up. It put me straight in my place, in my opinion. Um, obviously, with Terminator Dark Fate being woke as hell, couldn't stand it. Um, Star Wars franchise definitely went down that route. Couldn't stand it. Um, I put this in the same box and it, it put me right in my place. It shut me the fuck up. I was so wrong about it. Um, I don't think it, even though they kind of mentioned it, they don't force any agendas down your throat. She's not overly sexualized or anything like that. And she's, she's not uh, overpowered either. Like that's that, that's damn right. That's damn right. Yeah, she's not what would Mary Sue, that's what they call her. A Mary Sue. She's not a Mary Sue. Yeah, she I doesn't hear that have... get banded about quite a lot, but I don't actually know what it means. So I'm not, I'm not gonna use it, but uh, it, it just means that, you know, a female uh, protagonist who has everything right with her like a ray from ray. star wars for example right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 i liked to enforce awakens a lot but then after that she became way too op it was crazy stupid so she was a mary sue this time that's not what she is she's um yeah naru there's that's the character there's a clear growth to the character over the film like the Absolutely. whole thing with the axe like that is a recurring thing throughout the film and it's got yep. great payoff it does and I, I thought it was cool, man. That shit was badass. Fucking axe with a rope or whatever. I thought it was cool. Um, yeah, I, I was really happy to see this um, 
yeah, to see it being set in the past. It was quite a unique take on Predator, and I was mad satisfied uh, with it conceptually. Over, overall impressions for me is I really enjoyed it. Like, mm-hmm. I've, there's a couple of problems, but I would dare say they're, they're petty problems. A couple of large ones, mainly to do with the music. Um, I think me and you differ on the uh, the music with it um, a little bit, but save that for a, a negative. But is it um, Amber Midfunder? I think so, yeah, Amber Midfunder. Great. Really well, like I thought she was amazing, and um, I, I really hope we get the uh, the Comanche um version of it that's in subtitles because I know in America they've been given two versions of the film to watch. Really, swear down. So they did the whole film in the um, so there's a version in America right now that got released over there that is in Comanche and all in subtitles, English subtitled. I really, really want to watch that version because I think that will make the film completely different. Yeah, if they do like that version, I think that'll be goddamn sick if they have like subtitles in there because I did find it strange that these, you know, like Native Americans have like full blown modern day American accents. Obviously, I was willing to suspend my disbelief, but um, yeah, if <laughs> they fit, if they do that, it's brilliant. The dialogue was working for me at the beginning um, because it was quite. I don't know, like, it almost felt like they, they weren't, like, saying the lines well or, like, it was a bit it was a bit vague, but then you've got to remember, no, this is, like, the 1700s. So I imagine, like, I just think it would go down so much more well and really give this Predator film, like, a different edge to the other ones if it was in subtitles. That's cool, man. That is cool. Very, I can, very. I can totally... To be fair, with it being a streaming, straight to streaming film, like they could have done that. They could have done that. But I see why they've gave the option. Like it's still a massive IP at the end of the day. They want people to go and watch it. So I think like Sydney Files will definitely go mm-hmm. and be like, yeah, we need to watch this, but in the Comanche version. Because I think it'll just get, give it a completely different flavor, a, a yeah, much man. more authentic flavor. And I think if it had stuff like that, that's something where I would overlook the things like the music, like the the soundtrack. I'd probably let something like that go because it feels so different as a person. Yeah, I I would definitely elevate my score. I gave the film a 6.5 out of 10, which is still a good score, by the way. And um, it might even change because, as I said in my non-spoiler review, I liked Predators when it came out, but as time went by, I fucking fell in love with it. Hopefully the score would get higher for this one for me. But no debate, the score would get higher if we had that subtitled version. I would never watch this English dubbed version ever again. Never. I'll no. never watch it ever again. Yeah, that that would be great, and I hope they do it. Bear with me a little bit here. Like, Please do. Like Go the, for the, it. The, the first half of it, I'm not saying it's got anything to do with Vikings, but like it, it reminded me of the Northmen. So, you know, like how the Northmen's like a, <laughs> a period sort of piece and like, it's quite like, like long takes, not a lot of dialogue spoken. You're in the wilderness and stuff. Like that's what I was getting from like this film at the beginning and with the music as well. They, like, they, look, I'll get this out of the way, right? I'm gutted they didn't use the Predator main theme. Like, I'm, Fair enough. I think it's so. I like it. The pre- when I think of Predator, I think of that music along with it as well. I think it's so ingrained to that character now. Uh, it's like mm-hmm. if you were watching Jaws, you'd be pretty miffed off if you didn't hear. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, Same yeah. with Predator. Like I, I, I need to hear like. Like it's got a similar, it's actually got a similar um, theme to Jaws in it. Actually, um, the first okay. movie, like, I'll send you it, like, I'll send you it later. But anyway, um, yeah, I was really disappointed with that. But the music they did provide, um, like you actually said in your review, which I did watch. Oh, okay, um, I didn't know. I didn't know you watched it. I, okay. I, yeah, I wasn't going to watch it just so you could get an honest opinion off me. But um, I watched it anyway. But I broke my own rule. I guess watching it before we came online. But anyway, yeah. great video, man. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no worries, man. Really good. Um, but yeah, the music that they did have in it did suit the scenes and they did suit. But what I would say, 
is one thing I wasn't mad on is the shoehorned in like lines of dialogue from the first film. Like that was like, oh my god, uh, did you do dude, that? Like, dude, that that was worse than when I saw Christian Bell say, "I'll be back." You know what I mean? I was like, nah, dude, dude, dude. Like, are we? Are we? Are we really doing that? Like, we've spent the whole film like really trying to set this apart from all the other films. <laughs> then we just throw in. Dutch's line from the first film. It's like, what the fuck are we doing here? Well, and, I, I, I thought that was a problem with, I thought that was an issue with Adrian Brody doing it in Predators, but I was able to forgive it because of how much I adored that film. Bear in mind, just dead, dead, dead quick. I do recognize the flaws with Predators being way too similar to the original. It's I just a homage that was... to that first film. Like that yeah, is what I, I thought there was, there was just enough originality there to elevate it and I didn't mind it. Loads of people hate that. I don't care. I love it. I did have a problem though, regardless with Adrian Brody's lines in there being way too like similar, like, come on, come on, do it, do it, do it, kill me, I'm here. Didn't like it. This one does the same fucking thing, but now it's even more tired. When it, when you got the whole, if it bleeds, we can kill it. And also it, even at the end, she, um, even at the end of Rue does say, come on, come on, come on, come on. And I was like, okay, you're doing the same type of shit. It's only small, but come on, we're tired, we're bored. Speaking of, um. What was it? Lines that they've reused, by the way. What we were talking about, if it bleeds, we can kill it. Yeah, Do you yeah. remember um, they've always got like the ugly motherfucker line all the time. They've got uh, like a play on the ugly motherfucker line in these films. Considering that the Russian soldier said it uh, in Predators. <laughs> I'm convinced one of these like French people, French soldiers said it. I don't know. I can't yeah, speak because French. There was, no, um, there was no subtitles with them, was there? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, that's maybe, cool. maybe maybe you're right, yeah. The uh this is really a film about hunting and survival. Mm -hmm. This may as well be called Bear Grills Colon Predator. Do you know what mm -hmm. I think? <laughs> yeah, I guess it's so like works. I'm trying to remember that I'm trying to imagine that Bear Grills fighting predator. <laughs> so what one negative I have seen online, and like I sort of get it, but like the uh, the CGI elements of the animals. Um, personally, I don't mind the CGI on the animals because I like animals. So the fact that the computer generated doesn't really bother me. Um, snake looked a bit dodgy, but I do like that whole that whole scene with the snake. I just thought is cool. Is so cool. Like it just Loved makes it. this predator instantly like, yeah, I'm I'm down for it. Like I will say, I loved everything about this predator and what he was doing and how he was hunting um i actually liked the uh, the cloaking device that he had on um i thought it looked pretty cool even though it did, does look different from that first movie and this is set 300 years before it all his um new gadgets i thought were great they were brilliant i knew it's old, old. Gadgets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I really appreciated the fact that they didn't have the plasma cannon on his shoulder. Me too. I Me thought too. that was amazing. That was a great yep. choice. And you know the three dots. I loved how they when they first appeared in the scene, and you're thinking, oh yeah, there's going to be some sort of like head decapitation or explosion from a plasma uh, cannon. But then the the dots start separating. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, right. and it, it turns out it's like three arrows. I thought that was brilliant. I was like, that's me. So well Love done. That. So well Propell done. It's like propelling the franchise forward, even though this is in the past, and just giving it little bits of making it different, but keeping it in the same in the same league. We're not going, we're not giving him an Iron Man suit. We're actually taking the plasma cannon off him and giving him arrows, and it's mm -hmm. so much cooler. Like, absolutely it. it's older yeah, yeah the bit where they're in that is like in the long grass and that that it comes on and like we're like no we, we, we've got him and she's like no he's got us and like yeah oh, mate, brilliant good to pulls him out of the way yeah it's yeah, great yeah. Yeah, i love it when the dots like bifurcate when they like split up and all that and then it turns out each one is linked to an arrow and i'm like oh, oh, i man. loved it yeah i was like oh, oh i see so 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 they're actually thinking when they're writing this holy shit and it's mate, great there's been, man there's been some love definitely pumped into this film on like such a like one thing I will say about this film, I love how everyone's pretty much on board with 
they like it and everyone seems to be having like a positive reaction to it whereas mm-hmm. the last reaction to the predator was so bad and i think it just left the worst taste in everyone's mouth including predator fans like me and you it mm-hmm. just it soured the whole experience and that's a film that i've watched multiple times since its release and that's a bad film so i'm hoping this gets a really top tier 4k release as well because the film's shot beautifully so like on the tv oh, yeah. to, to anyone watching amazing. yeah yeah to anyone watching me and ellis are avid fans of physical media we collect all the time um this is gonna look awesome on 4k blu-ray and um hopefully the behind the scenes are gonna be sexy as fuck as well the amount of love i saw put into this is great plus it came from the director of 10 cloverfield lane which i think is pretty solid and um yeah, man. It definitely shows here because he's obviously really good at doing suspense. And yeah, I saw huge amounts of love put into this. I think the Predator's look is the best I've seen a Predator look in a long time. And I'm, we'll get into it shortly, but I'm not talking about the face. I'm talking about the um, the mask itself and um, the way he's covered in bones. Now, pretty much there's something I want to say here. I don't know if this will mean anything to you. River Ghost. No? Oh, okay. Okay, so um, pretty much, I'm sure you know this, in the original Predator, uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme was playing as Predator. I'm sure you oh, know that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. So um, pretty much, he was dressed up in red, in like a load of orange, um, obviously, so they can do that effect where he's in the cloaking uh, mode. And... The thing is, though, is that it had a different look to the normal Predator. It had this weird beak and all that. It looked like some strange bird monster. It was pretty fucking bad. And it was before um, James Cameron and uh, Stan Winston fixed it. Yeah. So what happened was they eventually did uh, loads of fan service for... They've now called it the River Ghost. They've called it that now. Do you remember in Predators, uh, there was the... A random alien that they get Topher Grace it to like, exact- chase him. It looked like that version of what they were trying with John Claw Van Damme. Like you know it, when John Claw Van was. Damme was running. Is that is that what that is? Ah, so, right. So not only is have they done that, they decided, hey, let's do a reference, a callback, and let's actually develop it and make it into a monster, which is cool. They've also got a great reference to that River Ghost um, in the Predator. If it, do you remember the Halloween scene where the little autistic kid is walking around with the predator mask? Look in the background, Archie, dude. Yeah. yeah oh, what wasn't. is is someone in is someone in that costume? In the background, you're gonna see Jean Claude Van Damme's costume. Uh, the kid's wearing it. Ah, after it. Oh, thanks, mate. He just gave me another reason to rewatch the <laughs> predator now. God's sake. Yes. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, it's it's actually really? awesome. Um, it's a small thing. These are all small little references, but I just love that shit so much. Those are the callbacks I don't get tired of. Did you catch any of that reference in the new one or not? Any, that's my point. That, well, that's my point. I'm absolutely convinced that a part of the Predator's face, his uh, skull mask, is a, is slightly a part of the river ghost just check it out do some comparison shots you will see it I'm, at least a little bit of it not entirely but i swear to god there's like aspects of it that just have the same design i think it's cool man i will say absolutely love that uh new predator design of his mask where it's like more of a bio like bio mask basically yep. um don't have get me still- wrong i do yeah. Still got the mandibles on the side. You still got the mandibles being revealed. It only covers up part of his face. I think is awesome because of how new it is. I think is awesome. Yeah. Primitive. Yeah, totally, totally. Are they like? Are they way longer than they usually are on the on the predators in the first couple of films? Like you know, his I, teeth that come out. Yeah, yeah, the the mandibles, she, the side she, teeth. She, um, she snaps one off, doesn't she? In the uh, in the third act. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. They're definitely longer. His whole head is definitely a lot bigger as well, which we'll talk about soon. But also his uh, dreadlocks or sensors, as they were referred to in the Predator, they're a hell of a lot longer. And I um, like that. Me too. I like that me look, too. Man. I like it. I like it. I think yeah, he looked man. badass with the mask on, and I like how thin he was. He was a lot more athletic than he was. Yep in the ridiculous 
outfits that they put them in in the AVP franchise because they are ridiculous. Like the 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 big muscle suits, like they don't do anything for me. I think the more the more skinny, uh, angelic sort of predator is way more intimidating because it it feels more creature like. Whereas Mm -hmm. the AVP ones don't. To me, they're just like I don't know. bit unrealistic that you'd have these like macho bouncer looking predators now rugby tacklers man that's what they did look like <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah good show there's a couple more things i want to say about the predator like design things that i didn't mention in the uh non-spoiler review is that it's a nitpick but it bothered me obviously it's a part of predator law where whenever the predator gets cloaked it can't do that in water if liquid touches it <gasps> Oh my god, so what when sorry, because this whoa, sorry, but I think I might have a similar <laughs> opinion here that I actually said to my partner earlier on and it, it really annoyed the fuck out of me, but I'll let you carry on. Sorry, man. All right, no, it's because you were loud in my headphones. I was like, what the fuck oh, happened shit, there? Sorry, man. I'll t- Dude. I can turn down if you want, but no, but no, no, it's I fine. We might be on I... the same um same same page here, but Sorry, I don't think John Hurt sounded like that when the when an alien was coming out of him. Do you know what I mean? That, that's a <laughs> mental shit. Right. Yeah, it's a part of Predator law that uh, the Predator, when it's cloaked, if it gets underwater or gets liquid on it, it starts breaking up. The effect starts breaking up. It was also canon, canon in, the, in the video games. You could cloak, but if it was raining, you're fucked. You couldn't cloak in the game. That's what it was like. That's a part of the law. They did that here. The same type of thing. But what bothered me about it, first of all, is that it didn't work as efficient. Remember that his technology isn't as advanced in the past, yet it seems yeah, to this work is better. Three hundred years before the Predator in with Dutch in the first film, exactly. and that iconic scene in the first film of him falling off that waterfall with the oh, Predator amazing. going into the water, coming out, his um, cloaking device being fucked because he's been in water and him mm-hmm. having to turn it off. And, and in the second with... one, the sprinklers in the second one, the sprinklers, yeah. it did that. So yeah, it's been a part of that. Well, first of all, nitpick, but I just didn't like its look so much. It was kind of reddish. And the, I know it's in the past, but it just, I preferred it when it was blue. Not a big deal. It doesn't affect the film, but imagine the Predator's blood being blue as opposed to green. It's not a big deal. It doesn't affect it much, but as a Predator fan, it just looked a bit off to me. Don't really care though. However, this one, his look seemed to be... Sorry, his um, cloaking device wasn't as affected. It seems to work better than it did in the original films. He gets covered in blood and it's not yeah. crackling and all that. And it's like, what the fuck is going on here? Actually, so I think there was a flaw there, the, a continuity there's error. A, there's a scene within this new film where he jumps off a cliff into like a Riviera. like, And he's mm. like standing up and he's half like in the water, half out of it. And the suit is just like unaffected pretty much. And it does like, it breaks a little bit but it's not but not much blown. not much though and it's like yeah. you know what <clears throat> i know i said i liked it earlier on but you know what it reminds me of his uh, cloaking device what does it look like to you to me it oh looks like my the god man. the invisible man oh yeah, man. my god you're you're right it's got the same like like rectangular like not rectangular, rectangular or, octo, octagon octagon yeah. whatever it is yeah man like it like oh shit like, you're ha- right i was half expecting him when he like revealed himself to have like the invisible man's costume on with all the little cameras because that's what it looked like when it was shit. like do you know what i'm saying like that perfectly i didn't I, notice that I yeah, you're right um yeah yeah that's right so it's not perfect we got problems there i definitely agree another thing as well it's supposed to be set in the past yet his equipment some of it is more high tech uh, than modern day predator um, tech because those like three cube things, whatever that float and blow up. The, um, only, I... the, the only argument I'd give to that one, because I noticed that as well when it was happening, and I my mind immediately went to um, it being a bomb, like for mm. that for that area that, that he was trying to get rid of the um, the, the the French, like what. What were they called in this movie? The um, I can't remember. Can't remember. Oh yeah, it's really, really bad. I'm just gonna have to refer to them as the French. French. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. score the French is fine. Yeah, um, but yeah, he sets that um thing off with the three devices that go up. I don't. What what were they doing? Because it doesn't really show you, does it? it just it it they go up. Were they just decapitating people? Because that guy later comes who's got the decapitated leg. 
you know, who was mm-hmm. he involved in when that them three devices went up? But I can't it tell show, you, it doesn't show you. Like like mm-hmm. you said in your uh, review, it's a bit it's a bit predator light sometimes. Like it doesn't go full scale on the gore. And it's yeah. all CGI blood, which is like really infuriating. Yeah, like, terrible. You know that scene with Awful. the bear, this, the scene with the bear that could have been, which was still really cool. Yeah, I liked when it he a gets lot. That, yeah, yeah. When that, he gets the bear up and he's drenched in blood. Although I really did love the concept of that idea, and him like it just looked really badass. It was CGI blood, so it was just a big CGI red. <laughs> Blob, and I think that wouldn't have been hard just to cover like your stunt guy in the predator costume, just mm-hmm. cover him full of blood, and it just would have made it a little bit more visceral. And That's right. Also, more, also more the horror. predator during that scene where she says no, he's got us, and pulls him out of the way that chase through the long grass. Um, after the predator kills that guy, he's covered in blood and still chasing her. Great effect, looked really cool. I thought it was actually scary. I was like, fucking hell, that's some haunting imagery. Still. Yep. It's all CGI blood. Terrible. They need to stop doing this, dude. It's dated as hell. This is. You it's know what? Old. I, to- I totally get it in something like The Predator, where they've got a full scale CGI predator. Nothing about him is like real or tangible. Like, yeah. I would get it with something like that. But when you've got a guy and you've went the trouble, clearly, of making a really awesome predator suit, because I think it's phenomenal until you get to the point where he takes his mask off and he's got the worst. Honestly, to date, predator design of the face has been uh, in the whole franchise for me. Yeah, let's like, just yeah, go on. We'll talk about that in a bit. But go on, buddy. Keep going. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah. apart apart from that, because it sounds like I'm being really brutal. Like I really like this take on the predator and how agile he is, jumping from the trees to trees. Like he's he's like the way he's killing some of these French guys off is so savage, man. Um, he seems a little bit more messy, like. I don't know, like, and, uh, and sorry, just while it's come to my head, like one moment that I, I really appreciated, you know, it does a call back to when, like, it does it in a lot of Predator films, but when the Predators are like, um, doing like a, like a medical procedure on themselves and it shows you them, like, yeah. it's, it's a classic Predator trope. Like in the first film where he's in the tree and he puts that thing on his leg and he screams, and he does that raw. Same similar situation happens in Predator 2 when he's in the building. He has to make yeah. that quick, yeah, and he does that massive raw. In, in my personal one, opinion, in my personal opinion, the second one, when he's burning his arm shut and all that, cauterizing the wound, in my opinion, dude, I thought it was better than it was in the first film. And that's saying something. I'll tell you what, mate, I'll tell you what, I'll give you it. I'll give you that, right? Because I tell you, that scene is lit so well if you go back and watch it, like with the blues and stuff. Blue, like, yeah, yeah. The blue. Like contrasting the the bright neon green blood is just fucking. It's wicked, man. It's it wicked. is. It's one. It, it's one thing the predator's got going for him in every franchise. That that blood that he's got. Like I know you were saying earlier on. Like imagine if like we saw a predator film and he had like blue blood. It would. I'd be like, what the f- fuck, this man. Like it's mm-hmm. got to be green and it's got to be neon. But um, you're damn right. Yeah, in this film, in Prey, it shows you a similar scene where he's like, it's just after the the, the a pretty sick scene in the uh, the burnt down forest, and he just goes on an absolute rampage. Yeah, um, yeah. One of the best scenes in the film, um, and it shows you him doing his leg up, but no scream, no raw. Mm-hmm. Like this guy is like not bothered, man. Well, um, actually, first of all, you've actually beaten me to it. Well. Real quick, I don't think I think the reason why he didn't scream so much is because the if I remember correctly, the wound he was burning shut wasn't even that deep. It was just a light skin thing. I think he was just burning the top bit shut. I might be wrong. I've only seen the film once, but I didn't think it was that deep. So I get why he wouldn't scream. But this was a big problem I had with the film. I just didn't talk all that much about it because it was non-spoiler in my review. Um, but yeah, dude, he doesn't seem to feel much pain. This, unlike all the other films, this Predator gets fucked up over and over again. Because here's just, I don't want to go on a big tangent here, but this is what I liked about it. It technically is a Predator origin story. He's one of the first, if not the first Predator to arrive on Earth. 
So he's there, like, getting used to all the animals, studying the animals. We're seeing it from his perspective. He's getting better. And I think that explains why he's such a brute, running around fucking things up and not using as much of a stealthy approach as he did in the past. I think conceptually all that's cool, and I think it makes sense. The problem is, because he's using brute force and he's constantly getting in your face, fucking you up and all that, he gets hurt all the time. And he doesn't seem to feel any pain. He doesn't scream when he gets his arm cut off. He doesn't That's a scream. Big one. Yeah, man. Huge. He, he doesn't fucking scream all that much. And it's like, dude, something really odd is going on here, man. He, he even gets empowered at one point and it doesn't even do shit to him. And it's like, come on, man. Something strange is going on here. It. I don't, they did the same thing with AVP when when the Predator gets like pierced with the impelled with the Predator with the alien tail, but he was again it's a comedy that film technically and also he was technically dead anyway he was dying so it doesn't matter here he gets like his shoulder impelled or some shit and it's like dude why aren't you screaming why aren't you screaming when you get your arm taken off so there are many problems aesthetically with it and another thing. I do feel like as iconic as it is, the first Predator kind of put put itself in a hole and it backed itself in the corner when they did the whole um, heat vision thing. Obviously, I love it. It's iconic, man. Heat vision is iconic for Predator. But they did kind of put back themselves in the corner for the sequels because now they always have to find a way to make sure that the Predator can't see someone. So obviously, like with the second one, they were using the heat suits sort of thing to hide their body heat. With um, the Predators, they did the exact same thing with the mud. And it was obviously that, oh, you're rolling your eyes back. We've seen this. And in the trailer, when you see Naru getting caked in mud, I thought, oh, fuck, you know, they're going to do that again. Nope, now they've got to figure out something brand new and they're taking the flower shit to I slow really down like that, though. I really oh, no, like that, though. I like it. I like it, and I would take it over the fucking mud thing any day. So I get it. They have backed themselves in the corner, though, with it because they always have to figure out how the hell do the Predators not see them. But here's the thing that bothered me. I'm just there like, dude, if the Predator is a lot older, if this is, like, set in the past where the technology wasn't as advanced... Dude, if I'm willing for them to not have the fucking shoulder cannon and shit, if I'm willing for them to not have these things, I honestly think they should have taken away the heat vision. Unpopular opinion, but I think for this film, they should have just taken it out because I'm kind of tired of watching them constantly conjure up new ways to hide the body heat. Considering, and we'll get into this soon, considering that we're most likely going to get a prey too soon, I think only then should we have incorporated the uh, heat vision mask. I think then it would have developed it more like it would have... Uh, up the scale sort of thing i think they should have done it and i think the flower thing should have happened then because i'm kind of bored of them constantly trying to figure out how to hide their body heat um is it, 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 is it not is it not integral to the character though like everyone no, has to have a, i don't know i think for something like this like a like a major bit they've got to have a kryptonite they've got to have something where there's an in there's an there's a there's an in to killing it like and I think the heat vision thing has been a thing from the very first movie carried on. I know it happened um, in Predator 2, like you said, but a little bit differently. Predators, like I've already said today, like it was just, a, it, it's a total homage to, to Predator. I sort of let that one go. I mm -hmm. really, really enjoyed the fact that they had this flower in Prey and it wasn't just something that came out the blue. Like a lot of things, they set the, the mud up and it gave you like this thing of when she was in that mud, I was like, oh, so here we go. She's going to discover that the predator can't see her because it yep. was going on so long, that scene. And yep. you were thinking every time she chucked the axe over the thing, he's going to appear and he's not going to be able to see her. I was just waiting for it. I was like rolling my eyes and then they didn't do it. And I was like, yeah. interesting, interesting. I like it. And I like it. I tell you what, I, I like I didn't realize right in, up until the, um, the guy who gives her the gun the classic gun in, at the end of Predator 2 and he's shown how to use it. She gives him the flower and he can't see it. Like, I was like, this is brilliant. I love this. I, like, for me personally, like, as you just mentioned there with them doing a Prey 2, a little bit disappointed if I'm being totally honest and it's not because I didn't love this film. It just, for me, on a personal, what would I love to see the, the Predator franchise go on and do next? 
I'd love to see him in different time zones and different periods because he's clearly been coming back to Earth multiple occasions. He hasn't just come to Earth three times. Do you know what I mean? He's come back multiple occasions. I'd like to see him in the 18th century. What what happens there? Do you know what I mean? Like, dude, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I I want to see World War Two, Predator. I'm yes, telling you. a world a World War Two. What would it look like in the middle of World War Two if a Predator came down and was killing both like German Nazis and killing the British and like just going on an ultimate like them looking at World War Two and going that looks fun. Let's go down there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> That's funny, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, you're right. Like you were saying, they've backed themselves in a corner <laughs> with, with the heat vision. <laughs> to me, that isn't backing themselves in a corner. That is a plot device that is integral to the Predator franchise. For me, they've backed themselves in a corner because they've basically said, yeah, Prey 2 is going to happen. I, d- I don't really have like loads of interest in following this particular story set in the 1700s any further but i do have an interest in the predator franchise like itself i'd just rather see it somewhere else take it somewhere else give them the Um, same budget as what they gave this film because it's a smaller budget than the rest of them and that has worked so well for them just give them a smaller budget going forward in in a different era I think yeah, World yeah. War Two would be really pushing it, but you could set it in a in a in like one building in World War Two where you've got soldiers held up, um, they're not going anywhere. It's a bit like I don't know. Look at the end of um, Full Metal Jacket in the in the end scene with the sniper and the, the, yeah, the walking around the yeah. bubble. Have it like a situation like that, but it's not a sniper. It's the predator with the three dots, and they keep like, do you know what I mean? They would think it was a sniper, but it's actually like a predator. I don't. I'm getting. I'm getting way no, off no, there. No, no, no. I'm, I'm liking. No, I'm liking. I'm liking what you're doing. I want to see but, this. <laughs> you want, like, I, I just don't. I, look, I really love this film, and I know people might watch this and go, "But fucking hell, he had loads of problems and stuff with it, and nitpicks and that." It's not that. It's just me and you both love this franchise, and we want it to be like spectacular. And I'm over the moon that this film's being released, and it's getting praise all across the board, which it is. Yeah. Like everyone seems to be loving it. I'm loving that because. You know, like Disney can only look at that and go, right, let's go full hilt on this, uh, on a uh, predator. Now, what you're saying is about uh, predator, the prey being continued, uh, like this, like franchise being continued, like prey two and all that. I kind of agree with you there because I'm like, yeah, look, I'm done with this now. Can we just do something else? But it looks like we're forced to get a prey two. Fine. This is uh, the thing, though. You and I did predict, and we were kind of right. We did predict, didn't we, that the Predator 2 gun would make an appearance here. That was the first thing I thought of when I heard this yeah, plot. Man. Oh, they're going back yeah. to the past, we're going to get the gun. We did, but this is what I was so wrong about. I thought the, I, I was hoping that they would do something ballsy and that Nauru would die at the end and the Predator would win. And that's why we saw the old Predator. I thought it would be the same Predator, but, you know, in, in that one, in uh, Predator 2. I thought they were going to do that, and that would have been awesome. I thought that would have been ballsy and brave, and it would have been a big middle finger to uh, woke culture too. But um, thankfully, they didn't need to put up their middle finger to woke culture though, because this wasn't woke. <laughs> this was awesome. No, it, it was wasn't. Woke. It put yeah, me in my place. It's really though. good. They handle her like her character and her journey throughout the film. They give her a full on arc. Like there's there's no two ways about it. She wants to be a hunter from the start of the film looks up to a brother who is a hunter that they all respect. And by the end of that film, she's the one bringing the, the predator head back, not a lion. She's bringing the predator he- head back. That's been killing them all, including their prey that they hunt for their food. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Hey, yeah. Um, yep. I dig it. I dig it. I think um, a lot of this is fucking cool. How they did it. Um, the big, big issue for me, hands down though, is the third act. So again, Predator doesn't seem to feel any pain. I thought that was strange. Uh, But it was the fact that they relied too heavily on coincidence and good luck. Now, you see, in my personal opinion, I'm sure there are plenty of people who disagree with me on this, but still, the over-reliance on coincidence and good luck is a sign of uh, bad writing for me. 
if you constantly get to the point where oh look the protagonist is just lucky that's why the protagonist is surviving that's just a sign you haven't written this very well or planned it out well a, a good example is rise of skywalker uh the amount of times those characters were lucky i mean like that whole uh, thing hey, with the blade. i swear down like that film for me just on a side tangent is one of the worst films of the last 10 years but <laughs> separate i i really really disdain that film and you're not even a big star wars fan and that's still a thing no, I'm, not, I'm, but like, I'm a yeah. crazy fan i'm a crazy fan imagine how that felt dude it was awful for me but yeah when you rely too heavily on coincidence and good luck it's just a sign of bad writing and the rise of skywalker was exactly that with the predator they did the same thing the amount of fucking times in the third act that luckily this good thing happened like i don't know a predator dog vomiting up a grenade or oh riding my uh, i know god mate i almost forgot about it but yeah yeah and then they're like riding the predator dog around and oh no does oh my god does that happen yeah who's riding a predator dog the woman at the end of predator uh, the oh, Predator. Fuck, Olivia Munn. Yeah, yeah. The uh, plus, there's so much coincidence. Of good luck. Like, it's, it's like the main guy. I can't remember his name. The guy from Logan. It's like he's in um a ride or something. Like riding something. Like he's when he's on the Predator ship, he's like sliding all around the Predator shield and all that. Good luck can be a part of it. I mean, it was lucky that Dutch got covered in mud, right? Luck can there be a, a part lot of, of luck, it. There, there was a lot of luck involved in that first movie. Hundred percent. Exactly, but when you rely too heavily on it, it's awful, and that is exactly what happened here. Everything was always perfectly mapped up in time just to make Naru lucky. We're talking about the shield not cutting off her face. I forgot to say that. I dug the shield. Uh, but yeah, the shield not shield cutting off her. Yeah, yeah. The way it doesn't cut off her head, because luckily she's in between branches. The serendipity of like uh, the lion not killing her at the start of the film when she gets knocked out and her brother dragged her back and all that shit. It just happened again and again and again. It even happened like she sets up like spikes on a tree. So when the predator that does was, parkour. That was the bit where I was like, what, she put spikes on every tree in that area i was a little mm -hmm. bit like that's convenient that he's managed to get to the tree that but i don't know yet i can dig it to an extent i mean they did it with the first predator to an extent but this time it's just so overblown and it's happening again and again so that bothered me me personally um, i just thought like come on man this wasn't well planned out she's just too lucky um, it's not a case of her being a Mary Sue, thank God. It's not like she's skilled at everything. It's just the fact that she's lucky over and over again, and it was boring me. But then the worst bit of it, hands down, and I'm sure you and I agree with this, and I winced. When it happened, I fucking winced. The Predator face. Oh, my Right, let's God. just get into it, man, because we've been alluding to it for the whole video, but he looks fucking terrible, mate. Like, I don't know what this design is. I wish they wouldn't keep trying to, like... Look, right, as far as I'll go, right, is in Predators, and that was even a push, but I'll let it go because it was an actual animatronic, like, head that they'd made a bit bigger. It was a bit more gnarly. I get it. But this was, like, a CGI monstrosity and it just looked terrible, and especially the eyes. The eyes looked absolutely god-awful. The CGI face on this, like, awesome practical suit, where you could have just built a really slimy, if you want to make... There was a way around it without going the CGI route. Like, exactly. much more expensive, like, oh, we're going to have to... like, And that's why, like, the mask didn't come off until right at the end, because if that came off any sooner... They would have to CGI that face throughout like the majority of the film, which would have cost more money, like um, budget wise. Well, they did. They did briefly remove it at the halfway point, but that was only brief. He then puts his mask back on and it's covered yeah. up until the end. And yeah, you're right. Even worse, it was in broad daylight at the when they, you first see it, so you it just, see it properly. It, it's it, horrible. It absolutely killed me because I was loving it right up until the point of like that mask coming off, and I was like, "Oh yeah. my god!" And it was particularly like the eyes and the way the eyes were shaped. Like it was, it made it look cartoony. I was like, "Oh my Dude. god, this looks terrible." Exactly. So not only is the CGI not so convincing, not only that, and not only does it look more dated than a film that came out 35 fucking years ago. I mean, I didn't even like the way, I didn't even like how the Predator face looked in Predator 2. I thought it just looked way too rubbery. At least it yeah, was practical. Yeah, yeah. At least it was practical, practical for yeah. fuck's sake. 
Um, here, it just there's nothing convincing about it. It is possibly the worst Predator face I've ever seen. Possibly. I don't know if I agree with you there, but it's right up there. And it also just doesn't look right how disproportionate it is. It's like, it's so overblown. The eyes look fucking horrendous. they weird and orangey. But then at the end, with, with how you've stated how it gets a bit like comical at the end with the stupidity of the Predator... Mm -hmm. I agree with you in some respects. Um, like the whole, I actually think it was quite, I've mentioned it before, but the fact that they went back to that uh, big mud pool, like the swamp area, and effectively that's how she nails him. Like she outsmarts him. She doesn't overpowers him, which is... That's fine. No, that really... bit's fine. The mud thing I was fine with. I was fine with that. I just think it's a decent callback and it's like a complete U-turn to what you expect that mud would be used for. So it hasn't been used for uh, invisibility. It's been in used to trap him. And I thought that was like pretty clever and pretty like, oh, I appreciate that. You call them back to the original there and mm -hmm. the other ones that have used the, the cloak, uh, the uh, invisibility of the mud... But you're mm -hmm. doing it in a way that's different yet clever. So I did appreciate I'm sorry. that. That's cool. But that's absolutely cool. That wasn't what I was referring to, though, in my non spoiler review when I said he got stupid. First of all, as well, adding to coincidence and good luck, when she pulled off the Predator mand mandible and then stabbed him with it. Cool. I haven't seen it done before. But again, it's just coincidence and good luck. It just kept piling on. It was boring me. So I was already like, Meh. But it was as soon as he somehow forgotten how his... I, if I... I might have got this wrong. He forgotten how his own mask worked. Like, he's there trying to shoot arrows at her as if he'd forgotten that it automatically follows the lasers. Has he not noticed that his mask is off and this won't work? I don't know. Maybe I've, uh, maybe I've got that wrong. I might have that wrong. But from what I saw, it looked like he'd forgotten how his mask worked and shit. And then he shot himself with it. And I was like, look, man, what are you doing? That's the only horrendous. the only counter argument I would have for something like that is that he was shot in the fucking brain right before any of that happened. She shot him behind, oh, when she yeah. behind him, mm -hmm. and you could see like the bullet had literally like he was fucked off because it had come straight out. It went through his brain, so mm -hmm. that's the only thing that like because that was the first thing that happens before any of that that when he goes into her trap basically. Before that, mm -hmm. she shot him in, in, the, in the skull, in the head, and it comes out the other end. Mm -hmm. So maybe he's a bit he's a bit off. I don't know. He's just had a bullet smashed through his brain. Yeah, you know what? But, I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you on that. Yeah, I didn't think of that. So yeah, maybe maybe if I thought of that, I might not have put that in my non-spoiler review, maybe. But um, still, there is one thing that I will never change my mind on, dude. It's still has an element of comedic goof to it. It's something that you would expect to see in The Predator. Like, for example, the guy who blows up his own head with the uh, when he shoots himself with the Predator shoulder cannon. Or the way the Predator dog gets docile after it gets shot in the head, it becomes friendly. It's almost like arcing back to that for me. And I was like, oh, god damn. Um, so I still don't like it regardless, even though what you said helped. I still don't like it that much regardless. Um, it's just a little bit too iffy for me yeah it reminded me of the predator dog i don't even want to real quick i don't even want to call them the predator dogs i love the predator dogs from predators those spiky things i thought that was brilliant yeah, lore yeah. expanding i fucking love them i wish they used them a lot more they were great and then you got pre the predator and it's a load of fucking crocodiles with predator dreadlocks i fucking hated them so much um but yeah either way this kind of reminded me of that even the predator face in this new one the kind of look like the predator dogs from uh the predator it just looked all roll to me i i really really thought it was just okay at the end I just, so I, I, like i don't understand why they feel that they need to go and change the design so like radically when you've had like a legend such as stan winston do this awesome design that is timeless like when you watch mm -hmm. predator now he's like that still looks awesome like yes Yes, it still looks great. So why fuck with it? Like you say, they did fuck with it in um, Predator Two, but at least it was still practical. Fair enough. In Predators, I love the fact that you get that original Predator design with the Predator that's tied up. I love that. And yep. the new Predator, I get why they've made in in Predators. Sorry, so like the last remaining Predator, like the bigger one out of a lot of them. 
I didn't mind that predator design. It's still not great. That's taken it too far for me. I still thought it was more intimidating with his with his predator mask and you know, like the the bio jaws that he had. Like it looked awesome. Oh yeah. Yeah, it looked great, man. Yeah, but in this jaw. one was awesome, was loving it. Predator like his face was revealed was just like, oh no. Yeah. It took the, a lot um, away from it, man. It took a lot get, away from it. I just thought that's I agree. not good. With um, with with uh, Predator is what you're saying about that new Alpha Predator. Uh, but I do agree with you. It, they did take it too far. <laughs> Sorry, I do agree they took it too far, but at least it was practical. At least yeah. it was practical. Um, here, dude, I don't even give a shit if it was practical or not. It's still the design looked gash. And here's what I will say about it as well. Um, it's a weird contrast because, in my personal opinion. This is the fucking best any Predator has looked ever since the first film. And yet it's the fucking worst we've ever seen as well. Like, I think with the mask on, I thought he looked it's remarkable. Because, because it, it's quite new in his body. His body shape is a lot more athletic than we've ever seen. Yeah. It's a lot more thinner. Lanky, I think, lanky. Yeah, lanky, yeah. And it may, I, could, I just think personally that makes him more intimidating because he's quicker. Like, he gets faster in general. Do you know what I mean? So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Um, bit of a shame. Dude, I thought that giant predator literally looked better than this predator unmasked. And that's saying something. <laughs> I thought that looked better than this shit. Um, but Just whatever. when he was unmasked, up until yeah, yeah. that point. Oh, yeah, of great. course. Of course. Yeah. Um, actually, I don't think I'd say great. I'd say remarkable. I thought yeah, he looked yeah, absolutely... Like, you know what I really appreciated? You know when it, it showed shots of like his legs in his feet area. And normally when you'd look at them, they'd look like boots. Do you know what I mean? They'd look you could tell it was a suit. It looked mm -hmm. like an actual like alien, like walking. I just I used to appreciate it the, yeah, the way me the too. suit looked. Me too, dude. Um they really did put the effort in. It's so flawed, but they did put the effort in. One thing I will say that I've seen so many times now, and I can't believe I have seen it, is people saying it's like as good, if not better, than the original. And I think that is absolutely fucking mind blowing, to be honest. You're, yeah, you're crazy. Like, like are you? Like, did you fall over? Madness. Did you bang your head? Like, like yeah. Uh, Badger, there's not many films I'd give a five out of five, perfect ten out of ten score to, but like there's there's no issues with Predator that I can find or have ever have found. It's a perfect movie. I don't have this above Predator Two. I don't have it above Predators. Yeah, yeah, we're on different leagues there. I would say it's above Predator Two for me, but I would kind of give them both the same score for now. But this is what, because by the way, as I said, though, I am a big fan of uh, Predator 2 regardless. It's still possible. There's enough brilliance in it that elevates it up for me. But I'm praying, I'm praying that I like Prey, no pun. I'm praying that I like Prey a lot more later on. Um, because for right now, I'll give it like a 6.5 out of 10. I think it's a good film. It's possible. It's a, a good film. And compare it to the last film, it's a masterpiece. But um, everyone else seems to be loving it, and I'm jealous. I don't. I'm not there with them. I'm fucking happy for them, though. Thank God we're all celebrating Predator again. This is yeah, great man. for me. I love but it. I'm not. I'm not with everyone else. So I'm praying that I watch it again and again, and I fall in love with it eventually. I'm hoping, just like Predators, I like it more as time goes by. I fucking hope I get with everyone else because. This is a solid, solid entry. And for me personally, I'd say it's the third best uh, Predator film. For me, I'd put it just after the Predators. Um, I'm, going, I'm, going, yeah. I'm going fourth all day long. And I'll, yeah, fair. I'll, maybe when I watch that Comanche version, I might have a total different like thought towards it. Do you know what I mean? But right now... like, Please, please, please bring Predator that out. Two. Yeah, I like it. It's possible. Um, I am disappointed that it's slightly... But with that being said, I'm more far more celebrating than anything else because we've got oh, Predator. Oh yeah, totally. Still, Predator is still celebration here. Celebration time, man. Yeah, celebration. Predators like it's been still here. really, really well received. It's managed to crawl out the ashes of the Predator, and we're all systems going out. And if that means getting a prey to, I'm all for it, man. Badger, we've still got to see that uh, Comanche version, man. See what, see yeah. what that's saying. Dude, I'm hoping I fall in love with the normal version, but if it turns into that, the Comanche version or whatever, I'll be hunting for that man like that dude i'll i'll pay a hundred pounds for that that would just 
That would yeah. make it on a whole new level, dude. That would just be stunning. So yeah, I hope I fall in love with it like everyone else. And um, hopefully I'll get on board with everyone else. But for now, I do like it. And I'm celebrating. Predator's still going, baby. Flawed as fuck, but it's still, it's still going. Hopefully they take more risks and uh, like this with this cool concept. So roll on Prey 2 and roll on Predators 2. Come on, let's find a way off this fucking planet. Yes, I agree, Adrian Brody. <laughs> Do it. Right, also, but yeah, oh, thanks good. for coming on, Alex. Thanks for coming no on. No worries, man. Thank you for having uh, me on. Oh, good. I'm going to put the link up below, guys. Uh, but Alice has, so far on your YouTube channel, you've done like five videos so far. I'm on all of them. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. You've so featured just... on every one of them, but you may as well be my co-host at this point. But Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So yeah, there's that. Also, um, your main gig is obviously Instagram, where you constantly post your collection. Uh, it's yeah. a sexy collection, guys. I'll put the link below for uh, the of Ellis's Instagram. And uh, also, shout out to Andy, aka Electric Geek, who couldn't join us today. Motherfucker has the sexiest voice I've ever heard, man. He sounds like James McAvoy, you know what I mean? Scottish yeah, accent, he sounds man. Like fucking james bond mate he's an absolute legend anyway. <laughs> yeah. thanks very much for watching guys what the hell are you sexy as fuck anyway thanks for watching guys i'm gonna say it. the cat's phrase ready thanks for watching guys stay jiggy and let's take it away what i'm joking i'm joking i just saw it <laughs> <on the spot. laughs> thanks for watching guys stay jiggy the better appreciate you Thank <laughs> you.